Up next on Connections, we'll tell you what senior citizens need to know about the major changes coming to the Seniors Ride Free program. That story plus CTA's bus tracker soars to new heights as residential buildings and businesses get creative with the do-it-yourself option. We'll take a look at a new website that highlights public art on the CTA and we'll see why CTA buses and trains are a comfortable and economical way to get to your favorite summer destinations. We'll update you on several transit improvement projects, including the new LaSalle Congress Intermodal Center. All that and a how-to guide for the CTA's Bike and Ride program, coming up next on Connections. Hello, I'm Omar Barragan. Welcome to Connections. Attention CTA senior customers. There are big changes coming to the Seniors Ride Free program. Current senior free ride cards will no longer be accepted starting September 1st. Only low income seniors will still qualify for free rides. All other seniors will qualify for significant savings under the reduced fare program. The Seniors Ride Free program results in an estimated $30 million in lost revenue annually for the CTA, and Illinois leaders say the program cannot be sustained. The new legislation now that is into effect as of February of 2011 means test, meaning only low-income seniors going forward will be eligible for free rides. In order to means test, the RTA is working closely with the Illinois State Department on Aging, and they manage the Circuit Breaker program, which provides benefits of various services to low-income seniors. So we are using their eligibility income requirements. Under that criteria, seniors registered in the Circuit Breaker program are eligible if income levels range from $27,610 or less for an individual, $36,635 for a two-person household, and $45,657 for a household of three or more people. Approximately 100000 right now um, should qualify for that benefit in the Chicagoland area. All other seniors will resume reduced fare eligibility, which is a federal entitlement and is the same program that they were entitled to prior to the legislation in 2008. A regular fare for a CTA train or bus is $2.25, and a regular fare for PACE is $1.75. Seniors who hold a reduced fare permit can ride both these systems for $0.85. Cents. Public meetings were held across the Chicago area in June to educate seniors on the changes. Basically, there will be two separate programs for those 65 and older, either the new Senior Circuit Ride Free Program or the Senior Reduced Fare Program. The Regional Transportation Authority is the administrator of the program, and our agency has taken proactive steps to determine which seniors of the 440,000 going forward will meet the circuit breaker eligibility requirements and those that don't. They already have your information, so there's nothing you have to do on, from the Department on Aging. The RTA's already received the database. You are automatically in the program. Seniors currently enrolled in the Ride Free program automatically receive new cards in the mail in August. So if your seniors Ride Free entitled, you will get that new circuit Ride Free permit. If you're a reduced fare senior, you will get the reduced fare permit. That's worth repeating. If you are currently enrolled in the Seniors Ride Free program, you don't need to do anything to get a new card, except open your mail. If you received a reduced fare card, you will, however, have to add value to the card before it is used. That's easy to do at any of the fare vending machines in every CTA rail station and other locations citywide. For more information on the new programs, go to the RTA website www.rtachicago.com or call the RTA Customer Service Center at 312-913-3110. CTA's bus tracker was designed as an easy way for CTA customers to get information on estimated bus arrival times. Increasingly, 
Businesses, universities, and even building managers are creating their own customized versions using the do-it-yourself bus tracker option. CTA's bus tracker program is rising to new heights at the Hollywood Towers condominiums on North Sheridan Road. Bus tracker is now available on an in-house TV channel. What we wanted to do was make it uh, so convenient for people they could just turn on their TV set. So we're broadcasting it through our in-house TV station that we dedicated to the CTA bus tracker. The bus tracker channel is must-watch TV for many residents. Whenever you get up in the morning or you're getting ready to go to work or you're going shopping or whatever the case is, you just turn to the channel and it's very easy to find out, oh my gosh, what's the 147 going to do? What's the 151 going to do? The bus tracker channel is on 24 hours a day in the building lobby and on the building channel for tenants. Managers set up the channel using the do-it-yourself bus tracker instructions on the CTA's website. They've made it easy to use, easy to configure at Settler Property Management and Hollywood Towers. We've come together again to bring this technology to our residents and just put it right in their living rooms. So you do not want to be standing out in the rain if you don't have to. Another Settler property, the 2626 Lakeview building, also features bus tracker on its in-house channel. We have the bus tracker coming up every two minutes or so because we intersperse that with uh, information about the building. Uh, but we needed something to keep people tuning in and give them a reason to come back. And so we needed live content. Someone suggested the bus tracker and uh, since we've put that in, it's been a major hit for us. Bus tracker screens have been a customer perk in coffee houses and other businesses in Wicker Park and Bucktown for several years, and they're required reading for transit smart students at DePaul and Loyola universities. We started off with a couple of universities uh, and then uh, a business district in Wicker Park, and now we're, we're up to about 80 different locations uh, where, where the bus tracker information is available. One of those locations is Echo Global Logistics, a transportation management company on the near west side. Obviously a lot of the uh, employees use the CTA, uh, use the buses uh, every day to get to and from work. When we heard about the CTA bus tracker, we thought that would be a natural way of helping employees be more efficient about using the buses with having it on the screens. So if there's 650 employees here and the fact that the bus tracker screens are there has upped the use of transit by a few percentage points, that translates into a, a lot of carbon saved, a lot fewer emissions. The CTA partners with the Natural Resources Defense Council to promote bus tracker to businesses. It's, it's really simple. You can go onto the CTA website. There's a link there for the bus tracker for business program, which also has links to either the do-it-yourself system or to the automated program interface, the API. It'll literally take you uh, as, as little as five minutes to set up and you're good to go. The application is easy to use, the information is free, and the benefits to the environment are priceless. Building owners to put it in their lobby or employers putting it up like this is a fantastic use. So anything that a company can do to encourage the use of transit by their employees and make it more convenient and easy is great. And there are new developments to report regarding the CTA's Train Tracker program. The Train Tracker Application Program Interface, or API, is now available on the CTA's Developer Center webpage. That means any outside developer can create a mobile application using the CTA's Train Tracker information. Meanwhile, Train Tracker digital display screens have been added to an additional 16 stations. A total of 29 stations now have the screens detailing estimated train arrivals. The number of surveillance cameras at CTA rail stations is about to double and look for an increased police presence as well. It's all part of the CTA's ongoing and uncompromising commitment to customer safety. Today we're announcing plans to double the number of security cameras on our rail system, saturating them so that every angle, every location is covered, providing increased security for passengers and more assistance to police. CTA President Forrest Claypool announces an accelerated program to install high-definition surveillance cameras across the CTA rail system. 1,500 new cameras will be installed over the next six months. The cameras already installed are credited with the identification and arrests of 13 criminals so far this year. As you can see here, a number of individuals have been arrested and convicted as a result of the surveillance cameras of the CTA. And that's why we are moving with all a deliberate speed to deploy them at a saturation level throughout the system. More police are also being detailed to the system. Transit officers who are freed from school assignments for the summer will be assigned to Wolfpack patrols, highly visible teams of uniformed officers work walking from rail car to rail car to provide a highly visible deterrent. 
In addition, more officers in plain clothes, undercover officers, will be deployed to crack down on thefts of iPhones and other electronic devices. Meanwhile, the CTA recently received high praise for its security efforts during a federal assessment of the system. The Department of Homeland Security recently recognized the CTA for its exceptional scores on the Baseline Assessment for Security Enhancement, also known as BASE. CTA received high marks in all 17 categories. Some of the categories that Homeland Security looks at are planning uh, for emergency preparedness and security, training and exercises, public awareness campaigns such as our See Something, Say Something campaign, as well as some of the physical security and other technologies that we use to secure the system. The CTA has strong partnerships with local, state and federal security agencies, including the Chicago Police Department. Uniformed, plain clothes and canine officers work the system daily. I'm an explosive uh, canine handler. We patrol the platforms and trains. So the trains to sniff bags. Anything that's unattended, we'll sniff the bags. Different containers on the platform. We sweep the platforms, we sweep trains, buses. If we see something we deem suspicious, we take the initiative, we check it out ourselves. We're all over. The officers and their dogs are some of the most visible security measures, and most customers are also aware of the CTA's ever-expanding network of security cameras. But there are many other, not so obvious, measures in place to keep the system secure, like the TAR training program. The Terrorist Awareness, Recognition and Response Training is really focused on the frontline employees and supervisors here at CTA, so that they know what to look for, but also how to respond. Oftentimes we see something that is unusual, um, out of the ordinary, and the idea here is to use your observation powers to look for those things. Perhaps the biggest security asset is the sheer volume of people who ride the CTA every day. We provide close to 1.6 million trips on a weekday, and that's a lot of eyes and ears out there. There's really no better resource than someone who sees something that just doesn't fit, and no bit of information like that is ignored. All the measures in place make for a secure system, a system that meets the stringent demands set by the Department of Homeland Security. We were told by the Department of Homeland Security that there are very few transit agencies um, that receive high marks in all 17 categories and that's why we were being recognized. So I think it's a, a, a nice um, affirmation of the type of programming that we've been working on here at CTA in conjunction with all of our security partners. Public transit customers are the beneficiaries of the CTA's partnership with the City of Chicago's Department of Transportation. The new LaSalle Congress Intermodal Center is the latest improvement. The new Intermodal Center sits on the southeast corner of Congress Parkway and Financial Plaza. It provides a direct connection between Metro trains and CTA buses. Whenever the city and CTA approach a project, we always try to achieve connectivity, uh, making the modes work together as smoothly as possible, and that's exactly what we've done here. The center provides a vertical connection via stairway or elevator from the metro station to the street for easy access to a new bus stop. Two CTA routes that serve the downtown area, the number 36 Broadway and the number 145 Wilson, Michigan Express, will begin stopping at the southeast corner of Congress and Financial Place. The center is also a welcome option for CTA customers connecting to the LaSalle Blue Line subway. Your walk between the two modes of transit will probably be cut in half uh, and it'll be uh, a lot more convenient for you to do so and most of it will be covered. Though a smaller scale construction project, planners worked in green features, including a bike track along the stairwell and a trellis canopy. It actually captures rainwater and uses it for irrigation, treating uh, stormwater as a resource uh, instead of something that you have to manage otherwise. Meanwhile, two other major CDOT and CTA projects are progressing nicely. The framework is going up on the new Morgan Street station on the green and pink lines. We do have structural steel up. We are installing precast uh, platform uh, pieces right now. Um, you do see at this point Two of the north, uh, the station houses being, being built, they're going to be ADA accessible. And you can see the framework for that right now. Construction began last fall. If the weather cooperates this winter, the new station could be operational next spring. 
by the end of the year should be substantial completion. The station is not going to be open to the public yet. Elevators should be installed. The station houses would be practically finished. And work on the Grand and State Street subway renovation is now about 85% complete. By far, it's the most difficult project we've had so far when it comes to uh, subway reno renovations. We're increasing the mezzanine in about 2,000 square feet. We're building three elevators to the station. The site restrictions in terms of utilities, traffic, keeping the station open, uh, keeping the streets open during the project is a challenge we have to deal with throughout the whole project. But the team is meeting the challenge, keeping inside the common goal of all the transit improvement projects. Taken in their entirety, these projects are really creating a world-class transit system that's going to have a benefit not only for transit users, but for the city as a whole. Another point regarding the new LaSalle Congress Intermodal Center, Financial Place is now a one-way street northbound from Harrison to Congress. That will facilitate bus arrivals and departures in the area and increase safety too. I'm standing inside the newly renovated Cermak entrance at the CTA Red Line Cermak Chinatown Station. The renovations are drawing enthusiastic reviews from CTA customers. This is what we've been looking for in the community. It has brought in a lot of praises and people are telling us that how nice the facility is and how much they enjoy coming down to Chinatown using the Red Line. The renovations are complete and CTA customers are enjoying the benefits of the many upgrades to the Red Line station at 138th West Cermak. Well, we're standing in the new street level uh, entrance for the Cermak station. Um, formerly, you would go up a stairway or escalator to reach the platform and pay your fare there. Here, you'll pay your fare at street level. We also have a new elevator making this our 92nd accessible station. Everything up to the platform is brand new, including the escalator and stairway, the customer assistance area, the fare machines, and more. We have high-definition cameras throughout the station and all the entrances, new stainless steel ceiling, bike racks, benches. We have a little courtyard area on the other side here. The renovated entrance is one of three options for customers using the station. An auxiliary entrance was constructed two blocks north on Archer prior to the Cermak renovations. We didn't formally have an entrance on the Archer side. So as part of this project, we first had to build an auxiliary entrance on the Archer side. Then we could close down this entrance. Um, and then we began construction on this side. The Archer entrance will remain in use as a secondary entrance and exit for the station. It is a convenient choice for customers making connections on Archer Avenue buses. Another option is a fare cart only entrance directly across from the renovated main station. You can also enter across the street on South Cermak. We've added HBGs, high barrier gates, that take fair media. It's a busy intersection and it prevents people from having to cross Cermak. All three entrances are ideally located for access to the vibrant Chinatown neighborhood, which is celebrating its centennial this year. So we have year-round activity from now until the end of uh, 2012. We have Dragon Boat Race in July of this year. We have New Year celebration as well as summer festivals. And so the opening of the station brings in a lot of tourism and visitors to Chinatown. It is essential to the economy and business in Chinatown area. Centennial aside, Chinatown is always a draw for Chicagoans and tourists looking to sample the restaurants, browse the shops, or enjoy the green space of this culturally rich community. The Red Line station here is a gateway to the Chinatown and surrounding communities. As we've been working on the station, we've had so many people in the community come up to us and say thank you, how much they appreciate it, how much they enjoy the new station. The opening of this station is critical to the economy of this Chinatown. It supports our business and it brings in tourism and visitors to Chicago and it opens up the entire Chinatown community to the outside. CTA's number 21 Cermak buses were rerouted during construction, but have now returned to the regular routes along Cermak to King Drive. All bus stops relocated during the project have also returned to their normal locations. The construction of the Archer entrance and renovations of the main station were paid for with stimulus funds from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act.
CTA is usually thought of as a means to get to a destination. But have you ever thought of the CTA as a destination in itself? You will once you view the new CTA public arts section on the CTA website. There are more than 50 pieces of art on exhibit at more than 40 CTA stations. People are familiar with the works of the stations they frequent. But now, much of the CTA's public art is highlighted on the CTA's website. On this website, uh, you can actually take a tour. It's a tour of museum quality artwork without leaving your home, but it's also a way to uh, map your travel throughout Chicago if you want to take an art tour. The majority of pieces featured are products of the federally funded Arts and Transit Program. Chicago's Department of Cultural Affairs oversees the selection and installation of the art. All pieces are original works. The selection process started in 2004 when we worked on the pink line and what's very interesting about the CTA's art collection is that it was a community-based process. In every neighborhood, committees were assembled to select the artwork and community members had an active role in deciding what the art would look like in their neighborhood station. Some of the art pieces are functional and double as seating. Others simply offer visual comfort. The work behind me at the Sedgwick Station is by Chicago artist Design. And what's interesting about it is that it reflects the Old Town neighborhood, which is known as, as a center of the arts, and it also reflects the individual because there are broken pieces of mirror in this work. Another work that's interactive is a suspended sculpture at the Howard Station by artists Carla Arrocha and Stefan Schreinen. They are Belgian artists who created this massive suspended sculpture of mirrors that reflect the station and that reflect all of the passengers. The Brown Line alone offers art lovers an on-the-go gallery of beautiful works. On the Brown Line, there is a new work of public art in every station between Chicago and the end of the line at Kimball. For the price of a CTA ticket, you can experience a wide variety of contemporary art by both international, national, and local artists. CTA Public Art reinforces Chicago's international reputation as a museum without walls. The City of Chicago has a collection of more than 700 works of art located in public buildings throughout the city, and the CTA has now added to Chicago's incredible collection of contemporary art uh, that really offers something for everyone. The CTA Public Art website provides photos, artist information, and the artist's interpretation of their work. As beautiful as the photographs are, the work is best experienced firsthand. It's literally like visiting a museum, sitting at your own computer, and hopefully you'll be intrigued by a number of works, and that will inspire you to go visit a neighborhood other than your own and see the art at the CTA. You could also download a booklet highlighting public art on the CTA on the CTA website. It's good for the air, it's good for your health, and it's good for your budget. It's the CTA's bike and ride program. And if you like to bike, there's no good excuse not to give it a try. There's nothing but positive spin for the CTA's bike and ride program. It, it makes it really, really appealing to folks to have, uh, to sort of avoid using their cars and using buses, trains, and bikes combined. It costs nothing extra to put a bike on a CTA bus or train. All CTA buses are equipped with bike racks, and bikes are welcome on CTA trains except during rush periods. CTA customers are allowed to take their bikes onto trains anytime other than uh, weekdays between 7 to 9 a.m., 4 to 6 p.m. When available, use an elevator or ramp to get a bike to the platforms. A bike can be carried up a stairway too. Once on the platform, keep the bike out of the flow of people. And when the train arrives, allow others to exit and enter first. Then find a place for you and your bike. You should make sure to secure it. The bike must be under your control at all times. Do your best to move the bike out of the general pathway so that people can still continue to circulate through the train. Putting a bike on a bus takes a few more steps but the bike racks on the front of the buses are really very easy to use. The first thing you need to do, and this is important, you need to let the operator know that you're gonna take your bike on the bus. 
so he or she is aware. The next thing I'm gonna do is come over to the rack. With one hand, I can push in and pull it down. I'm then gonna lift my bike up and put it in the space on the rack that's closest to the bus. Then I'm gonna hold my bike with one hand. With the other, I will take this spring arm and pull it out and over my front tire. I'm gonna secure the spring arm at the highest point of the tire to hold the bike in place, and that's all you need to do. Don't forget to take any bags off the bike and bring them on the bus. Once on the bus, find a seat close to the front so you can keep an eye on the bike. When you get to your stop, always let the driver know you will be removing the bike. The removal process is a simple matter of lifting off the bike, returning the rack to its proper position, and signaling the driver to let him or her know you're finished. It's really easy. Bike ambassadors will tell you that, you know, when we're riding all over the, all over the city during the summer, being able to get on a bus to get from one place to the next and throw our bikes on, it has to be easy and it is easy. As for the trains? I've been on every single line with my bike. The people that work in the stations are great. They're really supportive of bikes. One of the best things about Bike and Ride is the flexibility it provides. Carla Washington usually rides her bike to work and back, but on this day, she's tired, so she simply pedals to the nearest train station. I work up north, like in the loop. Once I get up there, I'll go around the different buildings to take care of plants, so that's what I do. So I'll ride my bike home usually, but I'm kind of cheating today and I'm riding the CTA. You can bring your bike on the train, you can leave your bike at the station. You can put it on the bus if you have a long commute, uh, a long distance to go. If you, if you get a flat and you've forgotten your spare tube or if uh, there's a sudden downpour, um, we, want to, we want to give our customers as many options as possible. There are bike racks at more than 130 CTA train stations. There are more than 140 miles of on-street bike lanes plus 40 miles of off-street bike paths in Chicago. The CTA and the city make it easy to go green and stay lean using Bike and Ride. It's a perfect time to get on your bike, get on the bus, get on the train. So we look forward to seeing you and your bike on the CTA soon. You must be 14 years or older to bring a bike on a CTA train or bus. Children 12 to 13 can use the Bike and Ride program if an adult accompanies them. It's summertime and no city does summer better than Chicago. Whether it's a beach or lakefront bike trail, an outdoor concert or a neighborhood festival, the CTA is ready to take you there. Chicago's lakefront attractions draw huge crowds seeking summer fun and sun. The CTA adjusts its service accordingly. We look to see which ridership has the highest for the summertime, and then we look to increase our service according to passenger demand. Naturally, there's increased demand along routes that serve city beaches. From Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day, the CTA adds weekend and holiday service on several routes. We have the 63. Uh, we also have the 78, which serves the Montrose Beach area. We've also got the 72 North Avenue Beach route that operates from 9 a.m. roughly to 9.30 p.m., which are the hours of service for the beaches. A summer service schedule is now in effect for Chicago's museum campus. The number 130 operates between the campus and the Ogilvy Transportation Center and Union Station. The number 10 Museum of Science and Industry operates approximately every 20 minutes. We have huge draws coming for exhibits as well as extended hours for the Museum of Science and Industry. Again, that number 10 route will operate every 20 minutes all the way until the end of service around 5.30 in the afternoon. Service hours are also extended until midnight on the ever popular 124 Navy Pier route. And service adjustments are made to accommodate special event and festival crowds. We make sure we've got enough buses out there and train service. So just relax, enjoy your summer, and leave the driving to the CTA. You want to get there economically, quick service, reliable, CTA's got that for you. Go to www.transitchicago.com for full details on summer service and for the easy to use trip planner feature. That's it for this episode. I'm Omar Barragan. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Connections.